Hi friends, I am A Rajesh from TTW URJC Boys, Warangal, Yakupura. Today I am here to teach you about the reflection of light at curved surfaces. I think you are very familiar with the reflection of light at plane surfaces and you know very well about how the reflection takes place in the part of plane surfaces. For example, here we have a plane mirror. I think you know very well about the reflection of light at plane mirror and the plane which has the reflecting area is called a plane surface. Now let's try to learn about the reflection of light at curved surfaces. Then what do you mean by curved surface? The surface which is actually curved in shape and not straight. For example, if you take a spear and cut a piece from the spear, then that piece will be acts as a curved surface. Here we have a curved surface and the mirrors which are derived from the sphere are called spherical mirrors. There are two types of spherical mirrors that we have. They are concave and convex mirrors. A concave mirror is defined as a mirror that has the reflecting area inside the curve and the painted area outside the curve. This is a concave mirror. And the convex mirror is a mirror that has the reflecting area outside the curve and the painted area inside the curve. This is a convex mirror. For better understanding, let's take a new spoon and the bulged inside words is acts as a concave mirror and the bulged outside is acts as a convex mirror. And now let's get into what are the parameters of this spherical mirrors. First thing, if you take a concave mirror, then the center or the midpoint of this mirror is called its pole, which is denoted by capital P. And the next one, next thing is center of curvature. To figure out what is center of curvature, let's perform a small activity. For this, we need a rubber foam and some nails. Then, stuck the nails to the rubber foam and that should be perpendicular to the plane of that rubber foam and they should be parallel to each other. Now let's try to bend this rubber foam. Here when you bend this, all this, when you bend this, all these normals will get intersect at a point. This point is called center of curvature or else we can simply say it as it is the center of that curved mirror. It is the center of that curved mirror. And the next parameter is principal axis. The line which joins pole to the center of curvature is called principal axis. And the next thing is focus or focal point. When a beam of rays which are parallel to the principal axis on reflection these all rays converges or focuses at a point on the principal axis. This is called focal point or focus. And the distance from the pole to the center of curvature is called radius of curvature. It is denoted by capital R. And the distance from the pole to the focal point is called focal length. It is denoted by small f. If you will observe in this picture the relationship between radius of curvature and the focal length is that radius of curvature is equals to 2 times of the focal length. Hence we can write it as r equals to 2f and f equals to r by 2. This formula is used in our day to day life to form various images in various fields. Based on images there are two types of images that we have. They are real image and virtual image. A real image is the image that is formed by intersection of the reflected rays such that if you will keep the screen over there then you can catch that image on the screen. And a virtual image is defined as the image formed by intersection of the controlled rays inside the mirror such as you cannot catch that image on the screen. 
this is a virtual image for better understanding let us take a spoon in this spoon which is bulges in acts like a concave mirror and the side which is bulges out acts like a convex mirror if you will observe your image in concave that the image appears to be inverted if you will observe outside of that spoon and then it is appears to be a virtual image now we done with real image and virtual image then how do we form these images in order to form images we need to follow some rules they are rule 1 the first rule states that when a ray moves parallel to the principal axis on reflection it will passes through the focal point and the second ray second rule states that when a ray passes through the focal point it will it will parallel to the principal axis this is second rule and the third rule is when a ray passes through the center of curvature it will passes in the same direction through the center of curvature do you know why it is so let's go somewhat in mathematics let's try to draw a tangent to the center of to the line which where it is incident if you observe there each piece of that curved mirror will appears to be a plane mirror when the angle of incidence is 90 degrees then the angle of refla reflection is 0 degrees here it will move in a straight way so that's why it is moves through the center of curvature these are the three rules used in formation of images then how do we form these images in various fields let's consider some cases where the images are formed firstly let's consider a object that is placed beyond the center of curvature and we need at least two ways to form a image as per our first rule let's consider the first ray which moves parallel to the principal axis and passes through the center of curvature and the next ray will move through the focal point and travels parallel to the principal axis as you can see here the image formation takes place between the focal point and the center of curvature hence it is a real image because if you keep the screen over there you can able to catch that image on the screen if you observe the properties of the image in this case then it is a real image and the image is formed below the principal axis in reverse direction hence we call it as inverted image and the size of the image is somewhat smaller than the size of the object we call it as diminished image in this case the properties of the images are real image inverted image and diminished image let's con consider another case in this case we will place the object between f and c as i taught you before we need at least two rays let's consider the first ray which moves parallel to the principal axis and moves through the focal point and the next ray will move through the focal point and travels parallel to the principal axis in this case the image is formed beyond the center of curvature and it is a real image and the nature of the image is real and it is inverted image but the size of the image is somewhat larger than the size of the object we call it as enlarged image in this case the properties of the images are real image inverted image but enlarged image now let's consider the fourth third case in this case we place the object at the center of curvature let's consider the first ray which moves parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focal point and the next ray will passes through the focal point and on reflection it will passes parallel to the principal axis if you observe in this case the image formation takes place at c because these two rays are going to intersect at that point and it is a real image and it is a inverted image if you observe the size of the image it is same as the size of the object in this case we have placed 
the object at center of curvature and also the image is formed at the center of curvature now let's try to change the position of the object let's consider fourth case in this case let's place the object at the focus as we know we need at least two rays to form the image now let's consider the first ray which moves parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focal point okay observe in this case is there any possibility for the second ray yeah there is no possibility for the second ray because the object is placed at the focus if you imagine that a ray which is coming from the object is incident on the plane of that mirror then it will appears to be passing through the center of curvature if you observe in this case these two rays are not going to intersect at anywhere hence we don't know whether it is a real image a virtual image erect image enlarged image or diminished image it means when you place the object at the focus the image is formed at infinity the position of the image is at infinity now let's consider another case case 5 i will place the object at infinity let's see what happens let's see what happens so the object is placed at infinity then how the rays going to be reflected for this we have to do a small activity let's take a rubber foam and it stuck some nails to it and take a candle and lit it lit the candle in this case when i move when i move the candle closer to this block the image will forms blur and the nails shadow will be diverted but as they move far away from this the image will forms at a certain point parallel to each other and it is a bright image from this we can conclude that when a object is at certain distance the rays which are coming from the long distance are must be parallel it means the rays which are coming from the longer distance they are parallel to the principal axis in this case the rays are very longer in distance so let's consider some rays which are parallel to the principal axis they will reflect back and passes through the focus if you'll keep the screen over there then you can catch that image so this is a real image but it is formed as a pointed image whereas it is a real real image but it is a just pointed image when the object is placed at infinity the image is formed at focus now let's consider the last case in this case let's place the object between pole and focal point as we know that let's consider the first ray which moves parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focal point in this case is there any possibility for the second ray no so let's consider a ray which is coming from the object that is instead on the plane and will be appears to be reflecting through the center of curvature if you'll extend these two rays into the mirror they will get intersected at a point where the image formation takes place this is going to be a virtual image because if you'll keep the screen over there you cannot catch that image on the screen hence it is a virtual image and the size of the image is somewhat larger than the size of the object we call it as enlarged image and the direction of the image is same as the direction of the object we call it as erect image in this case the properties of the images are virtual image enlarged image erect image now this will bring up me to the applications of this spherical mirrors in our day to day life So to prepare solar cookers, these spherical mirrors are used. Concave mirrors are used to preparation of the solar cookers. To prepare a solar cooker, we have to need 
antenna or dish of a TV and take a aluminum foil and paste on it and take a vessel and keep it under the sun rays. The rays which are coming from the sun are parallel to the surface of this dish. Then all these parallel rays will get reflect and they will intersect at a point. This point is called focal point of that surface. If you keep the vessel over there, then the food is ready to eat. This is the application of solar cookers. And concave mirrors also playing a prominent role in the part of aircraft landing to guide the airplanes. And convex mirrors are used in headlights of our vehicles. And concave mirrors are playing a vital role in the part of astronomical telescope and as well as used in the part of optical instruments. Till now, we have discussed about the spherical mirrors and the parameters of spherical mirrors. They are pole and types of spherical mirrors. The parameters of spherical mirrors such as pole, focal point and focal length and real image, virtual image and rules for the formation of image and the rays that we have discussed, ray diagrams as well as six cases where the image formation takes place different cases. And also we have learned about applications of these spherical mirrors in our day to day life such as in solar cookers and as well as in the part of automobiles. And this will become me to the end of this session, especially thankful to our uh, Dr. R. S. Pran Kumar sir to be a such good opportunity for me and I thankful to my guide teacher Sandhya madam and I thankful to my principal sir Dr. R. S. Srinivas Reddigaru and as well as I thankful to the state of Telangana and as well as for the teeth sad channel. Thank you.